National Security Advisor and a Crime and Security Consultant as well. Mr. James, always nice to have you. I couldn't have missed the opportunity this morning. So let me just uh, say to my, my viewers, I know many of whom tuned in to hear your contribution. He will join us this morning and um, he will also wake up early, um, God spare, tomorrow to have a more extensive discussion. Giovanni, welcome. Good morning, Shannon, and thank you for having me on your show yet again. You're most welcome. Um, quickly, when you look at where we at now with with the increase in, in in serious crimes, are police properly staffed, resourced, and trained to get to the root of this problem? Shannon, I, I would say yes, that we are proper, the police are properly trained and no, they are not properly staffed. But the issues that we face right now, Shannon, um, it's, I, I keep saying it is nothing new. Mm -hmm. um, when we had 10 murders at one time in the history of, of, of St. Lucia, it was seen as a major issue. Now that we have 60 plus, it remains a major issue. For me, Shannon, it is more a situation of the lack of policy and planning as well as execution because in the absence of all of those things you can provide all the resources in the world um, to law enforcement agencies and it is not likely to make the dent that we wanted to do in relation to crime our police force i can tell you has become too reactive mm. uh, in terms of dealing with crime uh, one of the things that um, when I was the citizen security advisor, and I, I, I want to use the word citizen security mm -hmm. because one of your contributors actually said, well, let's not just look at national security, but it relates to citizens. One of the things that um, I, we did through the performance management delivery unit, mm -hmm. and that is a unit I think um, you should look to bring on your show at some point as it relates to monitoring, evaluation, and execution of various government projects. PMDU is still around? It, sorry? The PMDU is still around? It is still around. Thank you. But they provide a critical role in terms of assisting government departments in executing government policies, projects, and proposals. Uh, one of the things that um, we identified when I worked with the Prime Minister's office is the importance of statistics in being able to identify mm. the areas where you had an increase in crime. And I think that if these statistics can be utilized properly uh, in terms of developing policies and mm. programs, it would assist the police in, be able, in being able to effectively police crime. But I, I think there's a lot that is needed to get us to where we are. It is alarming, and it is sad that um, references would be uh, made to undue fear um, and, and the like of that. We are in a situation where even the criminals are committing crimes, I would say, because of the fear factor. Mm -hmm. If I know that you're going to take me out, I'm going to arm myself with a gun to protect myself, and this is what is happening. Successive governments have failed to look at the root causes of crime in St. Lucia. We look at the results of crime, but we don't go to look at what has caused individuals to commit crimes. And that is where I think we need to be going. But don't we, don't, let me ask you, don't we already know the root causes, causes because we've done several studies. We are not the only ones facing it. We know it's poor economic um, environments. People are not... People want more um, economic opportunities. We know it's a breakdown in the family structure. We know it's the gang culture. We know it's corruption within various institutions. So these things are known. Is it a fact that perhaps the crime is affecting the ghetto and the small man? So it's not a national priority. We don't, we don't spend the monies that we have to spend because it's not in our high echelons, our high communities, which are probably gated. Um, it's only affecting the Mali way. The, the small man on the street who smokes ganja, they're the ones getting killed. They're the ones being caught with a firearm. Is that what's restricting our serious response to the crime situation? I, I, I wouldn't necessarily agree to that, Shannon, because if I were to do that, it would mean that we are in a serious, pro we are in serious problems. 
I think it is a matter where, yes, we know what the, the causes are. And I think we need to dig deeper into it, not just a surface level to say, well, it's a breakdown of the family. But what about the breakdown of the family? Because in knowing what it is, you are able to come up with the solutions for it. Um, does it affect the high echelons of society? I think it does, but not to the extent that it would affect the man in the slums or in the ghettos. Economics plays a very important part in what is going on. However, I think, I listened to the Prime Minister's address this morning, by way of example. I did not listen to it um, on the night that it was delivered. But one of the things that stood out to me is that there's nothing new in what the Prime Minister is suggesting that has not been suggested in the past. And of course, I would have read what the contributors had to say and what Alex, uh, Alex had to say in terms of doing the same things over and over. But where I would depart is to say that have we actually looked into the execution of those projects, mm. the social programs mm. that we speak about? That's have right. we looked at the monitoring and the evaluation of those to see mm. if, in fact, it is working? Because right now, all we have is a lot of talk and no actions. Yeah. It is not followed through with action or effective action mm -hmm. on the part of stakeholders to see that there is actually a contribution against crime. Mm -hmm. There is a decrease in crime. Because mm -hmm. right now, all the guys have guns. And what are we doing about it? We're talking about getting police vehicles. We can have a million police vehicles in the absence of persons giving information to the police that John Brown has a firearm. Okay? What are we doing? Mm -hmm. And so, for me, the problem is that we keep operating without proper planning and strategies. We operate in silos. I heard the Prime Minister talk about interagency cooperation. Shannon, I can tell you, being a former law enforcement officer, this was in existence long before I joined that's, law that's, enforcement. That's, that's just regular business. That's normal procedure that you'd have such sort of collaboration. It is. It is. However, where the breakdown takes place is that when it comes to the continued execution of this interagency, mm -hmm. it's again... There's a lot of talk, but where's the execution? Yeah. Where's the and monitoring? who's monitoring the performance of these agencies and programs? So we've spent millions on, on um, social programs, but nobody has been monitoring what traction have these programs and initiatives have in addressing the crime situation. But again, we say more social programs, more vehicles, but there is no monitoring of the po and that's where the, the the pmdu came in um so i take your lead yeah. and, and have probably have to invite them on lastly because we run out of time this morning but you'll be back god willing tomorrow at sunrise um after the prime minister ended his address in view fort barrage of bullets um erupted disturbing the evening's peace what what message does that send if any the message I got from it, Shannon, is that the address was not targeting those persons who were involved in crime. The address targeted law-abiding citizens. They are the ones who tune in to listen to what the Prime Minister has to say. Mm. So I don't think the, the, the gunshots being fired, and I understand it was in as a result of a birthday celebration, which yeah. is not the first time. Mm -hmm. It shows you that there is a disconnect between the government, and when I speak of government, I'm not talking about this administration. Yeah. Okay, there's a disconnect between the government and the people, okay, who commit crimes or the people who come from poor social and economic backgrounds. Alex said we need to get on the streets and speak to them. I don't think we should dismiss that as, mm -hmm. oh, it's just walking on mm -hmm. the streets. But unless we engage those people because they feel disenfranchised unless we engage them are win. we are going to continue to see crime increasing so my response is they probably were not watching this address most criminals would not take the time to watch the address so should we be finding alternative ways of getting to them should we be looking at social media intervention strategies because that is how most of them get information mm -hmm. 
via TikTok, via Facebook. Nobody has the time to look at news anymore. If it was, and if, from that sector of if, society. If, if it was, um, we could have a discussion on that. If it was, I think they watch the news, not, not every day of the week, um, not the entire hour of the news, but they watch certain portions of the news at certain times. Interesting discussion that we perhaps um, should have at a an, an, an later date. Um, Always, always a pleasure having you on, um, having you on, Giovanni. Let's continue the discourse um, tomorrow. Perhaps they would have watched if it was, if it was live and properly packaged. Packaged by that I mean, if they knew the police commissioner was on, if you had high-ranking officers with the M16s and in the police camouflage on with the prime minister to give that um, sort of. Um, that sort of imagery and, and proper packaging. I think they would have watched and, and it would have made the rounds. People would not have been so com comfortab com comfortable going out immediately after um, brandishing those high-powered firearms that, that we see now. And Shannon, you're going into another area which I would have raised, which is what has been the impact of the impacts report and the investigations on that sort of um, packaging or response mm, by the police. Mm. Let's talk tomorrow. Interesting, interesting yeah. door you just opened. We'll talk tomorrow, former um, citizen security advisor, Giovanni James. Thanks so much. Thank you very much, Shannon. You have a good day. And he is also a, a lawyer. He'll be back with us at sunrise um, tomorrow. I want to thank Addex for his contribution. Follow Addex on um, social media platforms as well. Addex Lava. Um, always a unique and interesting um, perspective. Um, good morning to our friends in New York. Hi, BB. Thanks for tuning in, um, everyone in New York City, especially our friends in um, Brooklyn and Queens. Hi. Happy, happy, happy Tuesday. Good morning to the people over in the office of the Prime Minister as well. We wish you a successful, successful Tuesday. We'll be back at sunrise. Thanks so much for spending your mornings with us. On behalf of the entire team, 